All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Engineering the Markets. It's September 1st, 2022. So welcome to a new month in the overall marketplace. And uh, congratulations for making it out of August. I know it's been sort of a challenging month for some styles of trade, uh, especially with the type of volatility we are seeing and some of the mean reversion that we're currently experiencing back to levels of previous support and breakout. Um, obviously, the downside has been in focus recently as we're entering August or entering September from August. And of course, as we discussed yesterday, if we look at our monthly, it's a very ominous looking S&P because we have rallied into resistance and have pulled completely away from it. So the entire month of August has been not only given back, but we've actually seen a lower close on August uh, monthly. So nothing necessarily bullish about the big picture here. Um, still in that bearish channel, still trying to find our footing just in our daily downtrend. And ultimately, we're looking at a gap down open at the beginning of today's trade. So the market actually gapped into our range support, uh, which a lot of people maybe thought was going to have a little bit of a stronger reaction prior. Uh, but so far, we're coming all the way in to that relative breakout point from before. Um, this has been a sort of a zone of accumulation back in June. We saw the July breakout and the back test, and we're pretty much back home at this point in time. So what to do about this marketplace? How should we respond? Um, what is the next play now that we're in a new month? Are we expecting some sort of bounce? Is this simply going to fall back into fresh lows? Or will we need to see more volatility pick up before anything really changes? And I think that's a question that I myself am kind of asking, uh, because ultimately there are some things that are not quite extreme in this marketplace, and yet we're seeing downside price activity with seemingly no floor. Um, first things first, volatility. Obviously, we're seeing downside price and therefore rising volatility futures. This is something that has not really gone extreme quite yet. And what I mean by that is we haven't seen that inversion or the backwardation uh, signal for certain long kind of extreme long positioning. Um, you'll notice September trading at about 2625. This is our active vol contract. And then our uh, future vol contract in October 2725. So we're still in a relatively normal curved volatility market, but as we've seen with other S&P lows, the market really didn't bottom out until this became fully inverted and then sort of reverted back to a mean uh, in regards to volatility coming off the market. We're also not seeing the same extreme signals as we uh, have, have uh, I guess, reference before inside of the put call ratio. Um, remember, this is just showing put call for all option clearing corp options, so OCC options. And like other inflection points in the S&P, they usually will be coming off of extremes, at least in this year so far. So oftentimes you will see things like relative highs occurring whenever the put call ratio is at its lowest points, about 0.5 if you're referring to this year's activity. You're also going to see some of the best inflection lows whenever the put call is trading around 1.2 to 1.3. As you can see, we're not really hitting any of those levels recently. There was a little bit of an indication of a bounce on August 22nd. And that was right into uh, the Jackson Hole event. So uh, that follow through, unfortunately, was not very rewarding. It was more of a short term bounce. So um, these readings, the fact that we're not seeing extremes, it calls into question how we should act. Should we continue 
to look for shorts? Are we looking at a potential bounce to kind of set up and should we take advantage of that uh, in the short term? I would say that the conditions are right for a bounce. Um, as y'all know, over the past couple of sessions, I've been looking for signals of some sort of inflection and really it's kind of lining up in regards to our weekly expected move about 39.50 or 48 SPX. That's going to be where most of this week's risk is uh, stockpiled. And if we breach these levels, then obviously the momentum will continue. But as we've seen with other tests of expected move, you often get a bounce first. Uh, you, do, you don't often lose these immediately, although it is very risky um, to look for it. We've also got our range support. This is a much stronger area of relative defense than other uh, buy and sell swings on the uptrend. Remember uptrends and downtrends form based on some sort of speculation. And if we look at the previous uptrend that the S&P encountered, a lot of it was based around the idea that the Fed was going to pivot and potentially start reducing the rate hike cycle um, expectation. After Jackson Hole, and certainly with the comments we've seen from federal head Jerome Powell, none of that has really taken into fruition. So it should not be surprising to see that the market has come back in because all of that trend was built upon the speculative nature of the potential of a pivot. And that's not true at this point in time. The market is not pricing a pivot. We're basically saying higher probability of 75 point rate hike in the next uh, FOMC meeting. And all of the commentary has been aligned with that. So we're not even seeing any sort of deviation relative to just position or hawkish behavior from uh, federal heads. So all of these things should not really, um, you know, from a price perspective, everything we saw into August has been given back. That is due to what drove the rally in August. And now that this is no longer true, at least based on current information, the market has pulled back in. So all in all, should we be looking for defensible areas if a rally has basically fully reverted? I think initially you can, but you have to have expectation of a bounce. You really would never truly trust these lows unless they form new structural uptrends in the future. And that's where, as we're starting to look for just a short-term bottom, something like a bounce low, a retest of support and resistance, something that indicates that the market has started covering their shorts, you will ultimately still need to target somewhere mid-range, even if that doesn't necessarily get achieved, it is the target. Um, and until that condition changes, you really shouldn't have any other expectation because the market is in its downtrend at this point in time. So um, all in all, I'm kind of looking for this as a more of a targeted trade. It has some opportunity if you can catch that knife correctly, um, but you don't want to take on a lot of risk. Hence, Option spreads are perfect for this type of environment. We're not extreme in volatility, so there is some case to be made that you could actually still be looking to buy debit uh, for any sort of targeted play. But if we continue to crest lower, obviously have some sort of defined risk strategy. Even if you're buying a call for a bounce or just using some sort of vertical play, um, all of those have defined risk versus something like selling naked put premium, you'd have to be pretty comfortable with the S&P pricing here because the potential of lower lows is very high. You know, obviously a bounce can be easily thwarted uh, for a continuation in the future. So um, I think ultimately that's kind of what I'm looking at. I think today is a gap down open 
for buying. Uh, we have a couple of stocks that will kind of drive some new behavior into the market. Uh, NVIDIA had some news regarding production and export in regards to uh, one of their high-end um, processing chips. And, you know, I won't go into the nuance of that, that news, but the technical level is fairly clear. NVIDIA is not only testing, but trying to defend its 52-week lows. Um, this stock has been one that has struggled to find its footing big picture. There's been bounces and excitement along the way, but ultimately let's talk about what's true, which is this is a downtrend. You know, this is still a downtrend. And um, until that changes, you know, these little micro rallies relative to the bigger trend um, can be countered and news can easily facilitate more downside. Um, I'll be looking more for the bounce play today for NVIDIA. I'm kind of afraid it's already formed in pre-market. And once again, even in a bounce play, you have to have relative targets. Um, I'm not really looking for full 100% kind of V bottoms here. I'm looking for 50%, uh, especially on a day trading time frame. And similarly, I'd be looking at AMD, but I'd maybe have higher targets here, mostly because it's sentiment um, that can be countered very quickly. And just like NVIDIA, you know, this one kind of came back into its trading channel. There's also just this core downtrend here. I don't necessarily have it marked as cleanly on this chart, but we're coming into some areas where I expect new demand. Um, even though the catalyst this morning is bearish, you know, it, it certainly gapped down. So um, gap downs that are bought are kind of confusing to a lot of traders. They often will surprise uh, people trying to basically just ride the momentum. Um, watch out for that. It's a new month. You can get kind of a lot of new money flow in the market. We'll want to see where does that money flow go. And is it in any sort of sector that's relevant? Um, strong market cap sector, or are we potentially seeing new interest in a possibly beaten down or not necessarily bullish sector? That would be more for some sort of um, kind of positioning into maybe a monthly uh, trade for that sector. And there's been some good profitability if you've been looking for um, uh, uh, sector performance. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this to load here. I just had a bad, uh, bad session. No. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I think, um, today's going to be kind of interesting. It's a new month. Allow the market to kind of tell you where the interest lies. Definitely watching semis today just because of the catalyst. And, and ultimately, I'm looking for strength in the S&P on an intraday basis, setting up our first signal that we may have a daily lower high in the future um, or a daily lower low into lower high. Setting up a bounce is essentially what I'm looking for today. So um, all in all, I'll be looking for questions at this point in time. Um, I'll start off with the chat room if anyone has any tickers or general questions that they want to go into. Um, we could start that off here. I didn't see any questions loaded except for the Oxy one. Okay, so let's look at Tesla. Um, so short term, we lost support. Tesla broke trend on the daily and that was after a range had formed you can argue that the low to high here was pretty clear and we've broken into lower bounds um am i bearish on tesla at this point in time not in the short term i think there will be a dip here somewhere within these ranges and that dip is probably going to be a pretty strong counter from bulls um, trying to find it is going to be tough because you're kind of trusting some relative trend line support and we're not quite home. Um, but you're also maybe using moving averages as a guide. Once again, the 50 is kind of what I'm waiting for. 
It also showcases that like bigger picture here, this was a breakout, but it can easily pull back in to these breakout levels. So similar to the S&P, having enough confluence somewhere in this range would be an ideal dip by scenario so long as it sets up. Um, and for that, I think you could probably see like a one to two day follow through, even if you're just back testing this and, you know, coming into it and rejecting. So I'll be looking for that. Um, I think the bearish activity here is already starting to be counter with these bottoming tails. There's just no follow through right now. Um, so there, there seems to be some initial purchasing going on and Tesla's getting close to a, a dip buying zone for, um, for swings. So, uh, triple M, um, also with Tesla, look at XLY, you know, if, if XLY is struggling, Tesla could fail those setups. Triple M. Okay. So industrials have taken a, a pretty steep hit. This is not just triple M. I think we've seen downside in a couple of names that are kind of your higher industrial names. Let me start off with XLI first. So triple M is top 10 Caterpillar. There's defensive names in here. I probably won't bring those up. Um, you probably want your, let me see where it lives. Okay. So the most similar companies relative to industry are going to be Honeywell and GE. So the question then becomes, are we seeing downside in triple M or are we seeing downside in industrial uh, conglomerates? GE starting to pull back. It's not as steep as triple M and Honeywell seeing a pullback, but it's similar to the market. Like there's nothing out of character here. Triple M is different. Something is different about this drawdown. It's steeper, it's faster, there's more volume. Um, so you would probably make the assumption that unless you're coming into a massive support zone, or if, you know, if, if it's running into that initially, um, something is very wrong about this sell-off compared to the others. It's different. And therefore, I think bearish. I mean, in all honesty, look at what's happening here. You're getting massive reversion on something that had already bounced off the weekly 200 a long time ago. This was a massive rally, but it's, it's giving it back. So something is different here. Um, arguably, we can find a stall point, but I would not really be looking long until I see that test occurs. And even if it happens, you know, the risk right here is that we just come back down to the floors, floor breakout levels, um, which is a negative thing for this particular stop. You know, it's obviously bearish. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting location relative to previous bounces you're still not seeing follow through. It, it happened already and it's being countered. So something is different. It, it looks like the market wants lower. Keep that, keep that kind of simple mentality. And I think you'll be, you'll be more successful than uh, people trying to speculate uh, too much on the, the levels. Um, how do you think the semis will play with the catalyst? I think AMD could be a stronger bull today. If the S&P is bullish, it needs NVIDIA to recover. So that's the thesis I'm, I'm running with right now. NVIDIA is at 52 week lows, it has to hold it. Meta, um, we talked about this one a few times, but um, in all honesty, the, the move off the lows was a range bounce. Um, it came on the heels of Snap's news, so it was kind of a uh, sympathy move. Um, doesn't mean it's not tradable. I just don't think it's doing anything different than before. Um, I mean, what's different about these oscillations relative to what we just saw? There is some topping that can occur, like head fix, but none of those have had 
follow through. They've all pulled back into support. And I, I mean, ultimately, this is still a very weak relative stock. It has the worst technicals across most of the large market cap names, um, even including Netflix, which is not a really a large market cap anymore. But this is a weak relative stock. So if the S&P goes down, I do expect this to break support. And we talked about some scenarios of like, 150 being a false low or a failed breakdown and possibly retesting seeded lows. So, I mean, nothing about Meta looks good. It's just, it's not in a good zone. It's doing the exact same thing it did before, just bouncing off of this low, but it has limited targets right now. Even if it crests above, those have been sellable head fakes for now. Until that changes, expect the same. Um, let's see. There's a good chance the video continues down to May 2021 lows and then bounce off that support, maybe. We'll have to see it. Ask the question, is NVIDIA a stock that if you bought it in 2022, are you happy? Is any bull happy about NVIDIA right now? There's maybe one day's worth of bulls that are happy. Unless they've been selling, you know, this is a trader's market. I keep talking about that, but is it is there any investor this year that is happy with NVIDIA? No. So seeing it go lower is the more likely scenario because it keeps doing it. It's still in a downtrend. We're looking at level support for short term. It doesn't change the macro trend. The macro trend is down this year. Um, and it obviously has a catalyst. So uh, let's see. What else do we have? I think I saw Amazon and then let me just make sure there's anything on YouTube. Uh, we do have ISM manufacturing. We have initial jobless claims. I'm gonna let Norm talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, Meta, yeah, yeah, Meta a few months ago. I mean, there's, there's always bounces. Like if you're a long bias trader in this market, you gotta time your location well because there is follow through, like don't misinterpret the upside. This is 20% upside if you catch it at the right time. Even half of that is profitable. Just don't go for something more than what the market is offering. If the market isn't offering higher than 183, you should not target higher than 183, even if it happens, because it's not likely. It's the less likely scenario. And then of course, you know, most of the momentum and general trend is still down. So, you know, staying short, some of these names has been more profitable than timing longs, even if you decide to switch parties at periods of time. Um, I'll look at Snap because it was a good trader yesterday. Um, high volume. Let me pull in this range here because you want to see the nuance here. Um, there is a gap fill. So this is all short term intraday stuff, but there was a gap fill. And we pulled back in pretty steep, but we didn't sell off hard. So in these ranges, it's probably kind of 50 50 who's winning. I still think it's more long bias because we just put a lot of bears under pressure yesterday and there's a lot of volume here so i'm going to watch and see what happens on snap but we do have a breakout range to kind of define getting above this daily gap with momentum is probably going to trigger another long until then it's going to be a little tricky you're going to have to watch out for like flushes because it is still trying to be short um, the catalyst was 
volatile, it wasn't necessarily changing anything about the structure. So, all right, I think we're out of time. I do need to let Norm discuss the uh, upcoming catalyst. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that shift occur. Y'all trade safe today. I know I missed a few of y'all's uh, questions, but as always, get them in a little earlier if you wanna kind of make the time slot. Um, uh, we'll talk more next week. Be careful today. It is a gap down open, new money, new cash flow, and obviously that volatility that we've been seeing. So um, yeah, trade safe and we'll talk more then. Welcome to the pre-market prep. I hope everyone is having an amazing morning. Hopefully you guys are having had an incredible day uh, uh, yesterday. All right, sorry about that. My trade ideas uh, password got funky on me, so I had to reset it. So it took a bit to get going. Good morning, Norm. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, brother. I'm doing all right. I'm having, I was having some computer issues, so sorry I'm a minute behind, but uh, I've got a dog beating on my door, so I'll be right with you, bro. How are you? Doing good, my friend. Doing good. All right um let's uh let's get to it guys what norm figures uh what's going on there let's uh take a look at what we have here on our gappers list this morning so quite a bit of both sides a lot in the red obviously the market is uh down a bit jay was talking about this throughout uh throughout the morning today and kind of some of the things he expects uh to take place after back-to-back -back red days so we'll see where this goes we are having a very uh active pre-market activity by the way in the spot if you can see the ranges here um we were pretty uh down uh, 391 394 heading back down here so just a lot of action definitely a lot of volume happening uh today 
Norm, uh, let's get to some of the latest and greatest stuff uh, we are seeing in the market. I know you're a minute behind, but what's the latest for today and the rest of the week? Yeah, man. So the big news uh, right now is NVIDIA came out yesterday and said they were uh, essentially they can't sell to China. The U.S. government has uh, kept them and other uh, chip manufacturers from producing high end chips and selling them, exporting them to China and Russia. Russia is not that big of a deal. Nobody's really doing business with them anyway right now. Right. China is a big deal. It has to do with military applications, AI and stuff like that. So. NVIDIA got smoked when that news came out yesterday. Uh, AMD came out and said it's really not going to have a material impact to them. Um, we'll see how that affects them, if the, what the reality there is. But uh, anyway, that's the big news going on right now. Um, we had initial claims, uh, initial jobless claims and continuing claims at 830, along with productivity revision and unit cost, unit labor cost revisions. At uh, 9.45, S&P U.S. Manufacturing, PMI Final Read, and then ISM Manufacturing Index and Construction Spend at 10. At 3.30, there is the, I believe, Atlanta Fed speaker, so uh, our Fed president speaking. So there you go. Let's see how it is. This week has not been uh, not been my favorite week of trading so far. Yeah, it, it, sure, it sure has not been uh, out of the several uh, days we had, uh, weeks we had in the summer. Uh, this one has not been great. New month coming up, but still we're gonna see the same song and dance probably to a couple a week or two more, uh, unless unless you were trading, uh, what is this AT uh, ATXG yesterday? <laughs> Did you guys see this madness? So uh, we were talking in chat, uh, Peter and some other ones later in the afternoon, and uh, who traded? I forgot the name of who traded this. I downloaded it yesterday. Uh, I believe it was. Oh, I forget the name now. Kaiser. Thank you, Master Chief. Kaiser of took this trade. And and again, and you might think, and Peter was talking about this, where you might think he's just getting lucky here, but he's not. He actually has a strategy for these IPOs, and he does this all the time. They don't all run uh, 8,000% gap up, right? As it ended up being <laughs> today, it went up after hours, went up to like about 1,000 something. Uh, and you're seeing that now. So again, just I thought I had a good day. Uh, and then I get this, and I'm just like, what is going on? So shout out to you, man. An amazing trade there on ATGX. Uh, and this morning, I think they're, again, very, very risky stuff, guys. If you don't know what you're doing, um, this is not in place today. I mean, this is just all over the place. Hit as high as it's almost 1,200 here. Just madness. All right, let me just put my uh, thing here on Do Not Disturb because I, I don't want this thing beeping. Um so yeah, guys, uh, we will take quickly a look at what we had yesterday. We're not going to spend too much time on it because we got a lot to go through today. Uh, but here is Meta. Meta yesterday. Let's go to uh, the action on the five. Uh, we had a good pre-market activity that warmed up, that got hot, pretty hot right before the open. Then just a lot of sideways action. And we saw a lot of this yesterday. Uh, CH Chewy as well. Same thing. Initial pop here and just kind of sold off. Not the best trading. Snap was actually horrible. Had a good pre-market activity here. Peter had an amazing short on Snap uh, right at the open. It's so funny. Peter was uh, he was covering for uh, Brian and, and Andrew, and he comes on and says, "You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not a good opening day opening uh, trader for the market open. So you know, I'm just gonna sit back and relax." And five minutes in, he takes this amazing trade. So uh, he what did an Andrew five there. Five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, right. I think he was in that within the first 60 Actually, seconds, but I'm not 100%. No, you're right. You're right because he caught it all the way up here. Uh, Since the pre-market was, was above saying, 11. Yeah, I'm going to short this. I'm going to short this. This looks like a short. I'm taking a short, and he did very well there uh, on Snap. Um, the here's Peter. See what happens when you trade live? You turn yeah. to Andrew. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. It was so it was so funny, guys, for those on YouTube. Because he, he said... You know, I'm going to be a boring trader. I'm not going to trade like this. And next thing you know, he does an amazing uh, trade there. Here's uh, Axie also yesterday uh, in the five minute. Very, very choppy for me, at least. Again, just the same song and dance. And then, you know, the market sold off yesterday. And you got our usual suspects. This is why I watch Apple. This is why I watch NVIDIA because they can move with the market very well. They did sell off a little bit yesterday. Obviously, NVIDIA has its own thing going on today. Uh, and Benjamin Briggs, yes. As you mentioned, <laughs> that believe was you yesterday as well. This week sucks, and it has not been great. There's no no question about it. So um, we'll find something today. 
Let's take a look at our gappers list this morning. We have uh, FM and TX. Uh, my trade is not linked. That's why that didn't work. Let me link this over here. Uh, external linking. Bring this over and we'll get this all linked up. Okay, here we go. Okay, perfect. So FMTX this morning, they are oh, horrible. Uh, it looks like a, just a black trade, big black trade, 2.6, 2.3 million. Uh, it got halted as well at some point. So maybe a buyout. Um, again, not much to see here. Uh, let's get our daily. Yes. Buyout, right? Yeah. Uh, let's get our daily Correct. down here. Uh, there we go. So, yeah, so nothing to see there. Moving on down to NTNX this morning, they are up a 16.2. Um, what, what is this? What is this? I'm not sure what it is, but they had earnings last night. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look great either way. Initial pop here for the most part, they're very light on volume, has some okay volume yesterday compared to what they normally do. I don't see myself watching this one. It just doesn't look great. Um, TRQ this morning. Uh, this has been in our list a few times, gapping up and down. I have not kept it on the list for obvious reasons. I think it, it trades horrible. And if we look at a couple of days here, this is on the 30th. You can see how choppy this is with no volume. And see yesterday as well, even though it had a little bit of volume, still very, very nasty trading. So um, I don't think today, even with this gap up, we've seen some big gaps ups and down from this here and here, right? And that has not traded well. So I have no hopes that this is going to trade any, any better today. So keeping that off my list, JZ this morning is a uh, 11.6 million shares float. We got some volume heating up here. Uh, another recent IPO that, um, that seems to have had a, a very wild, uh, open here. And uh, back down to six bucks after hitting 180. We had another one that looked like this before too. I forget the actual name of it, but again, just these IPOs now, it's just opening up wild. As you saw, problems that I on exactly as you saw uh, ATXG. This is an IPO that just opened up yesterday, and this is how they opened up at thirty dollars, shooting up to twelve, almost twelve hundred by the by the close. I mean, just uh, insane. Um, here's Ape. Uh, Ape's been nasty. It hasn't really done anything. I mean, uh, there's just not a whole lot going on. Very choppy. It doesn't move a whole lot. <laughs> we'll have to wait uh, to see what, what takes place here. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for uh, to see what it does. But today's not, probably not the day. <coughs> Gapping down, we have a whole lot more. Let's take a look at OTK, OKT. TA so okay TA this morning down 18.6 uh, and they are yeah I'll have to earnings last night they're getting some downgrades this morning having yeah, some yeah. problems they really are um let's see what happens here uh I don't say it's great but it's not bad I do like this guy this is a big gap down guys 18 point something normally this stock doesn't trade very well there's been a few days where they got a little bit of volume could be interesting today. Uh, yeah, it's just like because such a big, that. yeah. It's a the big spread sucks. The spread's got to yeah. come in for me right now. It's you know yeah, sixty cents. Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so it's almost a percent, a full percent. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, I need, I need more volume. I need the spread to come in. But other than that, it could be decent today. It, it could. I do like this drop that we're getting here. We lost a lot of levels here on the daily as well. I mean, we blew by ninety, of course, and we blew by eighty down to seventy four. 23. So yeah, I like this one too. I like this one. Uh, MDB uh, this morning, MDB right now is uh, down 16.4. Uh, not great volume guys. And and I don't expect a lot out of these guys because they don't get great volume. I could tell yeah, here. MongoDB trades like garbage too. Yeah, man. It looks hard. What is his earnings last night? Something broke yeah, out last night. Earnings last night. Yeah. Uh, let's go down to AI. Uh, and this is not Eamon, but it could be because we know Eamon trades like a robot. Uh, on how good he is. 14.7 uh, here down this morning, 126. Volume is very light. I just, I don't know. I don't see this being great. Huge drop yesterday. Earnings, I, I'm assuming. Yeah, yep. earnings here. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mega is another one that's just horrible, guys. Again, another oh. IPO. <laughs> that just, just uh, there's some madness here. Uh, not a fan of this one. Neither. When Okta's your best bet, I, I that that's problematic. Well, it it is. We're getting into some better stuff here, though. I, I hope so, man. I hope so. BHP, uh, foreign no, no, no. foreign ticker, yeah. but no. Not there no yet. <laughs> we're, we're not this bad. We have to put this on our list yet. So we're going to hold off on this one. LQDA also. Man, what is going on? So again, nothing to see here, guys. Horrible ticker. Uh, yeah, let's move down. BBBY, 
can we put you on the list today? Um, the fun, I think, is pretty much over after this drop down that we got here. This is kind of like a hit or miss. Meme stock, of course, this doesn't mean anything for this stock. I mean, it's just, are we going to uh, be memeing today or not? Right now, we're not, so we're not going to put it on the list. But if it does, it's going to hit our scanners, and you can take advantage of that if that's your your style of trading, right? Being able to scalp some opportunities on it. Uh, Nerf V, I mean, this thing it was nasty yesterday. It hit the scanners a few times towards the downside. Um, it just it just fell off here from 15 all the way down to 10. Uh, low flow, guys. Very risky now. It's going in a couple of days, but this thing has ran up pretty well. Um, is looking to get very toppy. Volume is dying down. The fun might be over. Careful if you're trading that one. Nvidia, yes, here we go. We got something we can put in our list. Nvidia is in play. Huge volume, 2.2 million, down 4.5. That is exactly what we want to see. FCX um, down 4%. Uh, this can get going. This can get going. We've seen it get going. Um, how good is it going to be? We don't know. Let's put it as a possible for now. Uh, but I do like the daily on this as far as losing some levels. That's about it. And this is a very, very, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's not great. All right. We got a couple of, uh, Chinese tickets. Looks like we got Lee, we got PDD, all of them down about 2.0% or something, 25 expect down 2.2%. Um, all of them with lit, uh, light volume. Neo, 500,000 has the most volume out of all of these. Um, so I'm not sure on these. What about Baba? That's probably the one I like the most. And they're not doing anything. No volume. Um, the best one here, and it's not great, it's probably Neo. And again, it's not really doing a whole lot. And it hasn't been great lately. We'll put it here next to the pile of possible uh, possible plays. Garbage. Yeah, possible garbage that can uh, that can <laughs> become gold, hopefully, which I highly, highly doubt it. Uh, plug plug is good. I, I like plug because we man, we look at this daily here, which has been getting hammer on plug. You know, it's been coming down. I'm not saying that we're going to continue this downtrend, but it's been moving uh, pretty well. And it did yesterday too. I didn't have it on my list, uh, but you guys did call it out. I'm going to put it here on my list, uh, the main list. Down two percent, one hundred sixty-seven thousand shares traded. I keep looking at JC Clapper. He keeps catching my attention. And I'm gonna <laughs> over in the chat. Um, AMD is another one we, that we can look at today. Obviously, in play, a lot of news around there. They're they saying that, that this is not going to affect them, but obviously they're they're, they're down 2.6. So the market thinks otherwise. Uh, with the overall news of uh, you know exporting into China, right? So that's how it it is norm. So what's that? Um, AMD also has an issue with exporting into China. As yep. Well, well yeah, right? they say they don't, but um... yeah, Mark is thinking otherwise. <laughs> uh, we, we will see. Um, all right. That's what we have, guys. Norm, anything you like on your end this morning so no. far? Yeah, I, 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 I get it. I get it. Um, let's go over to the chat. ATXG. Yeah, ATXG now is just a gamble, guys. It really is. I mean, if you look at um, uh, Kaiser's trade yesterday, he had a plan and it worked out nicely. He ex executed that plan. Um, there's no plan for what this thing is doing right now. It's 3,500 3, shares traded. You got $100 spread on that right now, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Yes. And who was $100 trading? $100 spread. Yeah. And, and who was trading this thing um, up here at uh, 1,000? 1, 1, uh you got like 600 trades being made there uh yeah it's just i don't man take this 100 is, shares of that yeah you've done quite a bit if yeah. you hit the, if you hit the bit you're down <laughs> what 10 grand just yeah. immediately just like, just like that so uh again it, this uh, this is messy not even worth uh, putting on the list not even for entertainment purposes it's just no. all over the place uh meta let's take a look at dream chaser you're giving us meta green in a sea of red you think so let's see uh yeah they're up they're up barely they're barely in the green um but yeah the interesting <coughs> daily as well guys they've been gapping up and just selling down sold off yesterday as well so interesting the last couple of days i'll say a possible a good possible i don't think they are really heavily in play right now but we will come back to that um let's take a look uh snap snap was a uh, very active pre-market action uh they carry into the market open after getting a nice drop here they have a couple of downgrades so a lot of things going on with them yesterday they had the layoffs as well right 20 percent. i wonder if that actually took place after it being leaked but um but here it is guys we are we are pretty active with them 
Not great, but let's see what this day does. We'll add Snap here to the list. Um, uh, Meta and Google, I wonder why. What's going on there? Uh, ATGX up to, yeah, it's like up like 10,000%. It's madness. Now is the time to get in. <laughs> okay, Patrick. Agreed. Uh, Google, let's see what's going on there. Um, on Google this morning, what do we have? Uh, yeah, it's active. Tough stock to trade, though. I, I don't think it, even after the split, it doesn't trade very well. But they do got some activity going on this morning. What's the news on this, guys? What, do we have anything? Uh, Amazon. Amazon's pretty quiet. Hey, Google, Google could be interesting today. Let's let's see what it does. Could be interesting. It's just moving moving nicely. Normally they don't move this well in the pre market. Let's see what uh what this means. So we're down in the green now, up one point two, and still climbing. So interesting. Uh, Apple. Yeah, Apple usual suspect. A good one to keep an eye on, obviously, if the market does decide to trend. Are we, are we going to have a bounce back day today? Are we going to continue uh, flushing down here? I mean, uh, I have my levels on the SPY. I think we're getting down here somewhere, 372, 362. Not all in one shot, but I think that's where we're heading based on uh, what's just going on around, uh, around the world and uh, just overall economy. That's my personal opinion. I have what's no, up? I think the spy is coming way down here eventually, 374, 362. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Bread lines. That's, what was that? Bread lines. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, man. Uh, it's uh, it's not looking good out there. Uh, Carlos, what do you think? Uh, where do you guys go to get information on what IPOs are coming out? I think ask you can go. Peter. Yeah, ask Peter. But I think you can go to the uh, trade, um, uh, the, 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 the exchange website, I think, has IPOs scheduled, right? Which they don't stick to all the time, but ask Peter exactly where the link is. He'll, he'll provide it for you. Um, okay, what else we're having? <laughs> Hope I'm right on the spot. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, man. It's just my, my thoughts on it. We'll see. Over on YouTube, TRQ. TRQ. Uh, oh, we looked at this. Yeah, this is horrible, man. Up 13%. I know the numbers look good, uh, but once you start looking under the hood here, this doesn't look, this doesn't look uh, tradable to me, at least right now. A lot needs to change here. Um, it's just, it's horrible, but given the history of this ticker and the way it has traded in the past, I don't have a lot of hopes that it's going to trade any better because even on gap up and down days, they don't trade well. So that, that's just my take on this one. Uh, for the, for the strategy I'm looking for, like a five minute opening range breakout on this, a break of five day, low of day or levels. I don't think it's going to do that very well. Um, so just, just be mindful of that, uh, weird ticker. Okay, over on YouTube, is that what we have? TRQ, Mary's giving us drug, Google we have, and we'll look at five from Adam next, and then we'll look at uh, what's happening uh, throughout, uh, throughout the week for BBT. So let's start with drug here. Um, drug, oh, no, you know, this is no good. This is, I think the fun is over on this, by the way. Um, I think this thing had its day here, days, right, with a couple of breakouts, and, and it's just back down here to 174. I think this is done. Uh, so be careful, even if you're looking to scalp that. I missed you, Christian. We'll look at CCL. Nice gap down with volume. Um, okay, volume. I mean, usually we like to see 1.5, 2 million on CCL at around this time. But again, might not get that in a week like it is now. Um, I don't know if it's in play, man. I think it's just down slightly, probably overall market. You know, I don't think it's doing its own thing. And when CCL is not doing its own thing, it can be a, a horrible uh, trader. So I won't be watching unless they have some news going on. Um, five, very quiet, no volume, or 3%. Also, guys, just look at the daily on this. Very tough trader. Um, 900,000 for most days. I mean, you're just not getting no volume on this thing. So that, that might be How do you not, not have fun. NVIDIA on your list? I do. I do. I just not scrolled up. Oh, it's at the top. Oh, no, yeah. It, it, it is. It has to be. It's only thing. Yeah, I morning. was like, I looked and I was like, because it was mentioned, uh, Jan over on uh, YouTube mentioned in video. I was like, that's got to be, it's on our list, right? We've discussed yeah, yeah. it. And I, yeah. I looked over there. I didn't see it. Sometimes this thing uh, scrolls down by mistake. But yeah, no, it's on that list. Number one for today okay. that we have uh, definitely in play, guys. Looking forward to that. All right, we will stop here. Let's take a look at what's happening in our community, guys. Over to bearbulltraders.com. All right, guys. Uh, anytime you're interested in getting this, you can go to bearbulltraders.com slash webinars, or you can just go click uh, from the homepage, that nav bar at the top, webinars. Every Monday night, except for next Monday night, it will be on Tuesday because of the holiday, 7 p.m. Eastern, correct? Yep, that's correct, 7 p.m. All right. Onboarding and technology with Carlos. 
Uh, then on Tuesday's strategy next week is John. He's going to be talking about fundamentals of profit taking. Thor will be talking about the where. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern. The following week, Psychology Wednesday. Next week, we've got Dr. Kenneth Reed talking about part two of his trading trance series. And then the next week, uh, Mental Edge with Kreda. 5 p.m. Eastern. Note that on the 14th because she is in Europe. Thursday, we have Mentorship. 11 a.m. with John. 4 p.m. with Ed. 8 p.m. with Thor. And then don't forget about StockTradingSimulator.com, our free web-based replay simulator where you can go 24 hours a day, seven days a week to uh, hone your trading skills. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, haven't been in the room, use the promo code PREMARKET24 to get you a discount off the intro membership. That's seven calendar days, five trading days in the room. It is a one-time payment. It does not recur. And if you'd like to become an elite member, you can use the promo code READ50 still for half off the elite annual membership. All right. Thank and you a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Dr. Kenneth Reed. Sorry. Yep. Oh, all good. All good. All right. Thank you, Nora. I appreciate that. Let's see uh, what we have going on here, guys. Let's start with our our watch list. And uh, we, we have time, so we can look at these two. ABT and TQQQ. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Andrew, I don't put TQQQ on my list, but we are watching the SPY. We are watching the Qs. Um, and if you want to take a trade on that, you know, the, the T's, QQQ, SQQQ are good ways to uh, to uh, take those trades. ABT, guys, has nothing going on. 362,000 shares. Um, it is not a, it's not a, it's not a great intraday trading stock. I've seen people take um, some moves on this. Uh, I've seen a lot of, I've seen more swing trading happening on this ticker than actual um, a day trading. So um, this is Abbott Laboratory. So again, I've seen some pretty really nice swing trading on this from from Brian I've seen some from other people in the community and my brother traces a ton always telling me hey it's time to buy and then whatever so he traces a ton so good swing trading stock but you got to know what you're doing but for day trading I haven't really uh, seen great opportunities for the way I trade um where we got going on how do I sign up for Brian swing trading emails we got time I'm going to show you because this is completely free and there's no reason why we all should not be signed up to this. So come on over to uh, Bear with Traders. You're going to go over to Education. And you're going to slide all the way down to the bottom. You're going to see Brian all the way down here. Let me make sure that it changes. Sometimes they change it. Uh, but I believe it's, yeah. No, I'm right. Here it is. All the way down to the bottom, guys. Pass our best-selling books over here. Make sure you check these out. Really, really nice Uh of books there as far as the information and things that you can look into um, here it is swing trading so come on down here go to swing trading you can sign up type your name email address and it's a very clean email and we are we are sticklers about not spamming you and not sending you crap right so we're very very good about that because we hate it when people do that to us uh, you know and other services we sign up for um, like Amazon I got to go in there and change my settings Amazon sends me three four emails a day write a review for this I don't, like come on man it's too much it's crazy so i got to go in there and change some settings i've been lazy to do that but i gotta do that we won't do that to you a very straightforward email very clean to the point on uh what he's watching what he's in what he has on his uh potential list of things to get on so sign up here completely free actually i'm going to send the link over on youtube if you guys don't have it um so here it is for youtube just scroll all the way down to the bottom sign up for his swing trading alerts um, again, swing trading now is not easy, um, but he does catch some good opportunities here and there. Also, keep in mind, don't just follow. I mean, you could swing trading, you could kind of follow, but you want to just kind of know what you're doing as well. Right? That's important. Um, so again, get the book here, How to Swing Trade. It's going to help you a ton. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, okay, perfect. Let's get back into our list here. Uh, so shout out to Brian for putting that stuff together and always sending uh uh, those um, those swing trading uh, alerts. Apple, Linda, Apple's on the list. Yep, I have Apple here. Uh, again, they're going to follow the overall market. So is AMD, so is NVIDIA. Those are our three, part of our three usual suspects, right? We're missing any other usual suspects that we like to watch. Amazon is kind of joining that list, the most recent uh, addition to the usual suspect list, uh, which is NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, and Amazon. I'm trying to think of some other ones that we have on deck, but I think that's it. I think those are the top four that are the, the BBT usual suspects. Neo used to be on that list. If you guys remember that? Neo used to be on that list. They fell off because um, it's just not trading as great as we were used to seeing them. Um, 
and we'll see. So even as the market changes, our usual suspect list always changes as well. Uh, uh, so we'll see what else gets added and taken off. CCL was on that list at one point, if you guys remember that. CCL was uh, at one point trading in Macy. Then the airlines, American Airlines was on that list, fell off from that list. Uh, oh, American Airlines, it is time. Yes, um, sorry, I'm just thinking about my long-term stuff. It is time to uh, to buy. This is 12.85. That is amazing. Anything on the 13, I'm usually buying here. Um, yeah, this is. A, I did not see that, and that's funny. I should be getting an alert from Think or Swim, and I did not. On the 13 uh, is my buying signal. So, uh, yeah, excellent. Uh, American Airlines. I'm going to put it here just to note it for myself personally. Sorry, guys, getting a little bit off track, um, but this is uh, this is important here. Uh, from our long-term stuff. Okay, very good. Let's get to levels. Uh, NVIDIA, Plug, AMD, Snap, Google, and we have Apple this morning are, are looking pretty decent with NVIDIA leading the way, guys. This is actually looking real, real nice this morning. So let's start here with some levels. Uh, right now, our low of our pre-market after a huge drop yesterday with the with the news, as you guys mentioned, uh, U.S. government does not want these guys selling to China or Russia. Russia is not a big deal, as Norm mentioned, which, you know, they don't sell a whole lot there. But China is, and the market is reacting to that news uh, uh, yesterday and today as well. So high of the pre-market, 145.12. The, uh, the low of the pre-market, 147.71. Um, so that's the highs and lows of the last of the pre-market this morning. Heading to the left here, we do have a tons of levels towards the top here, guys. Highs and lows of the last two trading days um, are doing a pretty good job up there. You got the previous day close. We got a big gap down today. Um, why is hmm, interesting how this uh, this candle is showing here? Um, but yeah, the low of the pre-market is definitely 140. I do have that correct, right? It's showing 143 elsewhere. Um, here, for example, this is the range. It's showing slightly different. I'm not sure why. It's showing 143.90, uh, which is up here. I don't know why I would show that when we're clearly uh, 140. Um, someone check. Is that just me or is that across the board? 145.60 is what I'm showing as the high of the pre-market. They're reporting 145.12. So just interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. Um, I, I don't know why that's happening, but I'm going to go with a chart that says this is what I'm seeing here. If someone could confirm that on a different uh, different application, maybe tradingterminal.com, we'd love to see what they're reporting. Okay, below 140, which makes sense in July. We had a nice area of support right on here on NVIDIA. Again, uh, we had a nice bounce off of that. We gapped down right to that low yesterday, and we're selling above from that. Below that, we have not probably, we probably haven't been there in quite some time, right? It's going to be yeah, year, year plus. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom into this area here, May 2021, and we're going to have 134.96. Might actually be 135, but you can see a nice level there. And this one's slightly above that. We had a lot of support here, 137. Uh, you got a lot of support there before we uh, we took off again. So I'm going to put those two levels on my list just in case we do get a drop here uh, and we do start flushing. NVIDIA can move, guys. NVIDIA can definitely move, especially today. We got great, great volume. Um, has not been great for the last couple of days. You see in this daily, nothing but sell off. So let's see what takes place here. Uh, I am seeing the same issue. Okay, I see the same. Perfect. Okay, uh, 146.60 on TOS. All right, so I got I got 145.12 here. It's fine. Uh, they might be looking at but Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Okay, perfect. So we are good there, guys, in NVIDIA. Let's take a look at plug this morning. I'm going to remove some levels. This could be interesting. We had the gap up. Since this since this gap up here has been nothing but red days, guys. Yes, we gapped up a few times. This is a flat day there. But for the most part, even on gap up days, we've been selling down. And we're back at an area where we're slightly below uh, the previous day close here of a good area of support and resistance in the past. So I'm wondering, uh, are we heading back down here? What's the deal with plug? Either way, I think it can be a good one. Um, typically on active days where we have a blockbuster list, this will be more of a possible. Uh, but today, I'm going to add this to uh, to our main list. 27.21, low of the pre-market. The high of the pre-market, I mean, it's dead smack in the middle of the low from two days ago, right over here. So you're set there. Looking below the low of the pre-market, as towards the top, you're pretty much covered. Highs and lows, previous day close. You're set on above that. Towards the bottom, we do have 26. 24 uh and then we have 25 50 so two good levels there that are doing a, a decent job very clear levels on the daily let's see what this does volume is okay we've seen better for sure 
um, but I really like this daily here uh, for a possible drop more than anything. So I want to let want to see if that's going to play out. And of course, if the market can help it, this can get going with some steam as well. Here's AMD high of the pre-market 83.24. If we're looking towards the bottom, it's going to be 81.53. And you, as you guys know, DAS can put these levels automatically for you, so you don't have to set them every time. Um, Peter always gives me a, a crap like why well, I don't have it set up that way I'm just so used to marking them down right um, kind of kind of old school that way but um, you can set this up automatically save you some time but I like what well, the one downside to this is once this level is set on your automatic levels if it moves and then it's going to up the upgrade to that level I usually want to keep that level on here because many times we might come back and that cannot become support. So usually I'll keep these levels, even if we do a new pre-market high, pre-market low. If we have some fun flirting with this level here, I want to keep it on my list. I want to keep it on my list just in case it plays out later in the day if we come back to that area. And we've seen that happen many times. Towards the top, guys, highs and lows of the last two trading days. You're set there. Let's look at the bottom for AMD. Obviously not great news today for them. They're down 2.4. See today, AMD and NVIDIA it's got their own thing going on. So um, they're they're on top of our list here. They're the two ones I'm really looking forward to uh, catch some opportunities. 79.53, a good level on the daily. We have 77.82. Uh, and we also have 74.64 and all the way down. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. We need, to, we need a monster collapse for this to happen. 71.87 just for the heck of it because it is right there very clean clear levels on the daily um so we're set on amd let's take a look at snap after uh just an insane rally in the pre-market yesterday right that was where the action was um then sold off at the market open today they're not getting nowhere near the volume we saw in the pre-market uh yesterday and then it started pretty early here they had a pretty a pretty good move and we put them on our list just based on this and then we got this crazy move up here with some serious volume coming in the pre-market that created some good uh activity in the market open i'm not sure how that's going to be today again snap can be very choppy even yesterday with all that movement you saw how the how choppy the price action was after the first 15 minutes it just gets really really weird when it doesn't have great volume on it um it is not a great stock to trade you need heavy significant volume on snap and and we know that from watching it so much so here at the moment, just kind of wrapping itself around the previous day close. We do have almost 800,000 shares traded, so it's worth watching. And we're just surrounded by the highs and lows here previous day as well. I'm just going to mark down this one up here. It's going to be 13, uh, 1131. After I do that, I don't think you need to do anything else, guys. Keep this simple. Uh, maybe the low of the pre-market, 1050. But that's it. I think this is uh, tons of levels you have here. You should be all set. Here is Google this morning. They are uh, they had a nice rally from the lows of the pre-market. Um, again, not the best intraday trader, and I don't have a whole lot of uh, high hopes for this thing, so I might end up moving this down if I find something better to watch. Uh, low of the pre-market, 107, and then we have 109.50 as the high of the pre-market. And then once you put those two in, um, you look around here, you are set. Highs and lows for the last two trading days. Uh, doing a really uh, good job. Um, how do I add uh, a level line? Oh, I just I have this hotkey. Um, tilde. The tilde key. I think I got it right. The tilde key is I click on that and that's my hotkey, right? So that the minute I click on that, I'm able to um, select these levels quickly. And then uh, the other one is the shift tilde so I can remove levels right away uh, when I need to clean up the charts, right? So um, the key helps me do that. You can do that by going to your hockey, uh, uh, hockey, um, go to file and hockey's or wherever that thing is. And uh, where you do your, your hockey's for you, like your montage, and you can set that up. Just go in there and look for charge configuration. And then they have a couple of things that you can do for your chart configurations, them being this uh, level line here. So you can definitely uh, get that done. Um, or you could add it manually too. I, I find this to be, you know, you can go in here and add it manually. It takes a little bit longer to do that. Um, you know, you got to click on here and the horizontal line, you could do that. But again, that just takes too long when you're doing so many levels. Um, and then you click on it. You can also delete it one by one if you want to delete a specific level. It's a lot you could do here. You could click on it. You can, if you, if you right click and configure it, you can put an exact price. Let's say you want 118. Uh, 118, uh, 25, you, you could do that too, right? So it's a lot of options to it. You can change the color and all that good stuff. So very, very um, customizable, which is nice.
All right, with that said, I um I think we're we're good to go. Let's take a look at Apple. Let's set up Apple here. Apple has some good volume I'm trying to get back up into the green territory. Again, a lot of stuff in the red this morning, especially in our on our usual suspects list. 155 uh 52 is the low of the pre-market. The high is smack dead in the middle or on right on the previous day close. 157.22 on apple so don't need to do anything there if you look towards the top you do have the highs and lows of the last two trading days and actually i'm gonna shift tilde here and refresh that 155 51 low of the pre-market uh, and then towards the top you got plenty highs and lows of the last two trading days let's look towards the bottom because that seems where things are heading uh, in the last couple of days um so let's go 152 47 a good level there uh, we have a slight minor level, not huge, minor level at 154.50. Uh, we'll throw that on there. And this is a very nice level. 151, good level on Apple. You can see that there. Great area of resistance and some support happening there as well. That is our list right now, guys. NVIDIA, Plug, AMD, Snap, Google, and Apple. And uh, with NVIDIA leading the way this morning, looking real, real nice today. All right, and the secondary list, we have Meta, which we'll see if we can get going here. We have OKTA, which actually, how many we have? One, two, three, four, five. I have six here, but I think that OKTA will probably trade better than Google. Uh, I, I just think for the way I trade, I think OKTA will probably trade better. So um, I'm going to put OKTA here. I got, uh, it's OB1 too many, I know that. But I think this will be the sleeper today. I think we're going to get some stuff happening on OKTA. Um, and normally th this type of stock we don't watch, we don't trade. Very light volume in the in the for the most part of the daily doesn't look all that good, but I think it's worth I'll put it on here. Uh, let's put in uh high of the pre-market 79.81. The low just being created right now at 72.71. We'll slam those levels there. Let's head over to the left and see what we got going on. Look at the high of the pre-market um right above the low of some support around 77.90. So We'll slam 77.90 as well. Let's head more to the left. Do we have anything? Oh, man, it's been a while. It's been a while they've been down here. So 52-week low being created right now. And we haven't been here since, what are we looking at? We're looking at 2018, 2019. It's been a while, 2019, 2018. Yeah, so right over here. Um, let's get some levels off of this. We're going to mark down 6810. It's a good one there. And I think that's it. We're going to really mark down only the real ones that are like really, really sticking out. Uh, another one, a good one here, 59. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting to 5990. Uh, that'll be something if we do that. But we are set for this one, guys. I think this will be the sleeper for today, guys. Be on the lookout. I think there's going to be some good opportunities here. The spread, Norm said it best. The spread's got to get better and you need more volume. You get those two things and I think we're going to have a uh, uh something nice to play with today all right metal man is giving us microsoft let's take a look what's going on with microsoft uh microsoft down almost one percent yeah this could actually be this is actually part of our usual suspect it's kind of borderline right it doesn't it's a hit or miss sometimes it doesn't get the great volume uh, but i'm going to be watching like uh, uh apple and nvidia today instead i think they're they're really more in play, but Microsoft is not bad, guys. If you like the way that one trades, it's a little bit different, less volume, but if it, it does trade well at times. Uh, why do we like NVIDIA so much? That's Melvin. A couple of things, man. They got they got the trifecta today. They got the trifecta. They got they got um volume, right? It's so the number one thing. They got 2.7 million shares traded. So they got the volume. They have a catalyst. They have a big catalyst of not being able to ship into China, which obviously the market does not like. Look at the drop they had yesterday when that news came out. And uh, they have a great daily, right? And when we say great daily, we're talking about they're moving very well here. You can see that here. They trade very well. When we say great daily, um, we're looking at uh, not a choppy BP type daily, right? We're not we're not seeing this, right? This is this is horrible. This is doesn't trade very well. Usually that comes with low volume. And usually, the, I mean, I picked a really bad, a, a extreme example. They're foreign stock as well. So they got a lot that's not going on for them um but nvidia has a trifecta today man they got everything going on plus the big thing here they're catalysts right uh sometimes you're going to have stocks when the market is moving like it has been the last couple of days where it's pushing heavily in one direction or the other uh you are going to get the volume you know you you are going to get uh you are going to have a good daily at times and you still can get a good trade you're not going to have the catalyst the catalyst is just the overall spot but today these guys have their own thing going on so 
Um, that's going to make them very, very interesting to watch. And I think they're going to trade very well. Just be mindful. It could be choppy as we get heavy volume at the market open, people making their decision on what they think about this, you know, uh, heavy volume for uh, from firms thinking, okay, this can be an issue in the future. Because remember, guys, it's not just day traders doing this thing, right? You got a lot of other heavy hitters that are going to be making decisions on what they want to do. Do they want to offload their NVIDIA shares, uh, you know, um, from their portfolio? That's going to create a movement. So it's not just day traders. There's a lot going on here. Um, and usually that first market open, we're going to see, we can see a surge of volume that can create a lot of choppiness. So um, like I got to tell you before, this week has not been great. Just be mindful of that. Wait for the setups. Be very patient uh, on your process here. Um, 9.13, the only watches I have for you guys is Susan. So Susan will be watching uh, Plug, FCX, and NVIDIA. Uh, secondary list for her is going to be SPY, the Qs, and AMD. You should tech uh, on permanent lists like Apple. So the usual suspects should be looking out for those. Um, and then uh, what else we have? And that's all I have for you guys. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us over on YouTube. Appreciate it very much. We'll see if Brian comes in with his watches in a minute or so. And then we'll uh, we'll read that out. If not, we will call it a day. Cause man, I have my I might have missed it, but uh, did we look at Oxy? You did not miss it because we did we didn't. So we can take a look. Oxy this morning. Uh, what did it do yesterday? I I I know the day before they were great. I did not have them on my list yesterday. If they were, they were on my possibles list, not on the main list. And man, it, I'm glad I didn't have them because they didn't look great here at all, as far as for what I would be, have been looking for. But you know what? They're not over explosive today, uh, AJ. But market open, you could get some stuff here because again, they're nice easy stocks. You're not going to get that volume um, during the market open, during the pre-market as you would. There's some days where you get great volume on Oxy, and when it does that in the pre-market, you know it's going to be a good one. Uh, but today's doing this normal thing. You won't know anything until the market opens. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll be. Uh, you could be on the lookout for this one. If it hits the scanners or so, I like the daily. We're coming just right back down here. Um, so yeah, that, that could be interesting. Watch sixty eight fifty. What's sixty eight fifty on on, uh, on Oxy? Sixty eight fifty. We're looking at right over here. So yeah, I I could see that. I could see that being being an interesting level. You got some uh, moving average there as well. Yeah, that could be interesting. Again, I just think they're 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 a stock that could be a hit or miss. Um, but the market open is going to give you a lot more information. Um, all right, guys, we are uh, all set here. Last one from Ross. I'm afraid to look at this one. S H P H, but I, I will because I don't want to leave you hanging. Oh no 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 no! Yeah, I knew I knew it. And just by looking at the ticker, I'm like, this might not be good, and it's not. It's not good. Be careful, guys. Recent IPO madness as usual with these new IPOs, just taking off and going insane. Um, very very careful, guys. This could be gambling if you do not know what you're doing. Um, so again, very, very careful. All right, guys, we are all set. Um, we'll call it a day here. Let me sure I didn't miss any more moderators. No, moderators are having a tough time with their gonna, list this morning. Go ahead. I was going to, I was going to add on that <laughs> SHPH that at yeah. times the spread is like five, six, seven dollars. <laughs> yes. be, be very crazy. careful with that guys. It, it's crazy. That's crazy. I'll be, uh, be on the lookout for ATXG. <laughs> This has this moved today. Four thousand shares traded today. Uh, insane. Just delete that. Yeah, I, I, I don't have it on my list. Again. I don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it on my list. No way. Uh, Megan coming in with her list: Nvidia, Google, and Disney. Michael watching Nvidia, AMD, and Meta today. Um, Norm, anything that you are painting eye on besides Nvidia? Anything you? Uh, I've got Nvidia, AMD, CrowdStrike, Okta, MDB, Meta, Tesla. That's what my list is. We'll see if. Yeah. I don't know. I get I get the opportunity to trade the open this morning, and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hate my list. So <laughs> that's not good, not good. But uh, but yeah, maybe we'll just have story time. I don't exactly. Know. Maybe it's you guys be can patient. watch me go back to bed. <laughs> Looking forward to it, my friends. I don't um, know. Who's going to join me this morning? Who wants to hop on the mic with me? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> How about how about Peter? The guy says not going to trade. Um, He's not around, I don't think, is he? Ah, oh, no, I don't think he is. I don't know if he is. Oh no, no, he did. No, that's right, that's right. That's why Messi's not going. He's to. taking his son to the airport, I believe. So yes, I yes. don't know what time he'll be back. Thor's not so, here, Mike. Thor's out. Amen. I would love to see Amen trade live. Um, 
but we'll see guys over on youtube thank you so much for joining us this morning we appreciate it very much guys hit that thumbs up what are we sitting at we are sitting at a no one that didn't get brian so brian's out today i forgot i, um, I know what at... we'll do hang on yeah megan you come in here and trade beyond the meat for <laughs> mel had earnings this morning i'll take crappy meat and let's see who does better oh that is great I, I would love to see that uh over on youtube guys we're sitting at 183 thank you so much for that if we can get to 200 that would be great appreciate you guys very much we're going to go here and continue trading live um with norm leading the open this morning and uh again not the greatest list so it'll be a tough open for him to lead but nevertheless we'll, we'll make the best of it guys take care trade safe over on youtube and we'll, be, we'll be in chat yeah take care guys trade safe i'll be back in a few minutes i gotta stretch my legs before we hop into it so if anybody wants to chat before yeah, we start, I'll, since I'll Brian's chat. not here today, you can yeah. do whatever you want, but I'll see you in a minute. Okay, you got it, man.